Hey third grade, I am still going to finish this even if it is officially summertime. We have just a couple chapters left. We have to get it done. This chapter is called Awards. I liked Mr. Tushman's speech, but I have to admit I kind of zoned out a little during some of the other speeches. I tuned in again as Miss Rubin started reading off the names of the kids who'd made the high honor roll because we were supposed to stand up when our names were called. So I waited and listened for my name and as she went down the list alphabetically. Reed Kingsley, Maya Markowitz, August Pullman, I stood up. Then when she finished reading off the names, she asked if all of us, she asked us all to face the audience and take a bow and everyone applauded. I had no idea where in that huge crowd my parents might be sitting. All I could see were the flashes of light from people taking photos and parents waving at their kids. I pictured mom waving at me from somewhere, even though I couldn't see her. Then Mr. Tushman came back to the podium to present the medals for academic excellence. And Jack was right. Zamana Chen won the gold medal for overall academic excellence in the fifth grade. Charlotte won the silver. Charlotte also won a gold medal for music. Amos won the medal for overall excellence in sports, which I was really happy about because ever since the nature retreat, I considered him to be like one of my best friends in school. But I was really, really thrilled when Mr. Tushman called out Summer's name for the gold medal in creative writing. I saw Summer put her hand over her mouth when her name was called and when she walked up onto the stage, I yelled, woohoo, Summer, as loudly as I could, though I don't think she heard me. After the last name was called, all the kids who just won awards stood next to each other on stage, and Mr. Shushman said to the audience, Ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to present to you this year's Beecher Prep School Scholastic Achievers. Congratulations to all of you. I applauded as the kids on stage bowed. I was so happy for summer. The final award this morning, said Mr. Shushman after the kids on stage had returned to their seats is the Henry Ward Beecher Medal to honor students who have been notable or exemplary in certain areas throughout the school year. Typically, this medal has been our way of acknowledging volunteerism or service to the school. I immediately figured Charlotte would get this medal because she organized a coat drive this year, so I kind of zoned out a bit again. I looked at my watch, 10.56. I was getting hungry for lunch already. Henry Ward Beecher was, of course, the 19th century abolitionist and fiery sermonizer for human rights, after whom this school was named, Mr. Tushman was saying when I started paying attention again. While reading up on his life in preparation for this award, I came upon a passage that he wrote that seemed particularly consistent with the themes I touched on earlier. Themes I've been ruminating upon all year long, not just the nature of kindness, but the nature of one's kindness the power of one's friendship, the test of one's character, the strength of one's courage. And here, the weirdest thing happened. Mr. Tristan's voice cracked a bit, like he got all choked up. He actually cleared his throat and took a big sip of water. I started paying attention, for real now, to what he was saying. The strength of one's courage, he repeated quietly, nodding and smiling. He held up his right hand like he was counting off. Courage, kindness, friendship, character. These are the qualities that define us as human beings and propel us on occasion to greatness. And this is what the Henry Ward Beecher Medal is about, recognizing greatness. But how do we do that? How do we measure something like greatness? Again, there is no yardstick for that kind of thing. How do we even define it? Well, Beecher actually had an answer for that. He put his reading glasses on again, leafed through a book and started to read. Greatness, wrote Beecher, lies not in being strong, but in the right use using of strength. He is the greatest whose strength carries up the most heart. And again, out of the blue, he got all choked up. He put his two index fingers over his mouth for a second before continuing. He is the greatest, he finally continued, whose strength carries up the most hearts by the attraction of his own. Without further ado, this year, I am proud to award the Henry Ward Beecher Medal 
to the student whose quiet strength has carried us up the most hearts. So, will August Pullman please come up here to receive this award? I am gonna read one more chapter because this one is shorter. It's called Floating. People started applauding before Mr. Tushman's words actually registered in my brain. I heard Maya, who was next to me, give a little happy scream when she heard my name, and Miles, who was on the other side of me, patted me on the back. Stand up, get up, said the kids all around me, and I felt lots of hands pushing me upward out of my seat, guiding me to the edge of the row, patting my back, high-fiving me. Way to go, Augie, nice going, Augie. I even started hearing my name being chanted, Augie, Augie, Augie. I looked back and saw Jack leading the chant, fist in the air, smiling and signaling for me to keep going, and Amos shouting through his hands, Woohoo, little dude! Then I saw Summer smiling as I walked past her row, and when she looked at me, she gave me a secret little thumbs up and mouthed a silent, Cool beans to me. I laughed and shook my head like I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. I think I was smiling. Maybe I was beaming. I don't know. As I walked up the aisle toward the stage, all I saw was a blur of happy bright faces looking at me and hands clapping for me. And I heard people yelling things out at me. You deserve it, Augie. Good for you, Augie. I saw all my teachers in the aisle seats. Mr. Brown and Miss Potosa and Mr. Roach and Mrs. Antonabi and Nurse Molly and all the others. And they were cheering for me, woohooing and whistling. I felt like I was floating. It was so weird. Like the sun was shining full force on my face and the wind was blowing as I got closer to the stage. I saw Miss Rubin waving at me in the front row and then next to her was Mrs. G who was crying hysterically. I happy crying, smiling and clapping the whole time. And as I walked up the steps to the stage, the most amazing thing happened. Everyone started standing up, not just the front rows, but the whole audience suddenly got up on their feet, whooping, hollering, clapping like crazy. It was a standing ovation for me. I walked across the stage to Mr. Chishman, who shook my hand with both hands and whispered in my ear, well done, Augie. Then he placed a gold medal over my head, just like they do in the Olympics, and had me turn to face the audience. I felt like I was watching myself in a movie, almost. Almost like I was someone else. It was the, like the last scene in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, when Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Chewbacca are being applauded for destroying the Death Star. I could almost hear the Star Wars theme music playing in my head as I stood on the stage. I wasn't even sure why I was getting this medal, really. No, that's not true. I knew why. It's like people sit, you see sometimes and you can't imagine what it would be like to be that person, whether it's somebody in a wheelchair or somebody who can't talk. Only I know that I'm that person to other people. Maybe to every single person in that whole auditorium. To me, though, I'm just me. An ordinary kid. But hey, if they want to give me a medal for being me, that's okay. I'll take it. I didn't destroy Death Star, Death Star or anything like that, but I did just get through the fifth grade. And that's not easy, even if you're not me.